Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about carboxylic acids, our third of four functional groups that we're going to look at in this course. This functional group looks uh, a wee bit more complicated than alcohols and alkyl halides. Uh, this functional group is called a carboxyl group. Carboxyl because it includes uh, what's called a carbonyl group. Carbonyl group is anytime you have carbon double bonded to an oxygen. And it also contains a hydroxyl group uh, with just a simple OH. So you take carbonyl and hydroxyl, combine them together, and you get carboxyl. Um, carboxyl groups can be represented using either of these two um, fashions if you see it written in a molecular formula. Um, R, remember, it just means any random chain of carbons of any length, uh, just kind of a placeholder to mean a carbon chain. So the carboxyl group is a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen. And then from the same carbon, you have a hydroxyl group attached. Carboxylic acids are acids. They're weak acids. Acids are substances that donate protons. Um, and in general, hey, for our purposes, they are uh, substances that donate protons to water, making a hydronium ion. And the hydronium ion is what we... Uh, measure when we measure the pH. So carboxylic acids um, will have pHs less than 7. It's because they give up the proton highlighted on the right to water. That's the acidic proton. Um, they're weak acids, meaning that most of the molecules do not give up that proton, um, but some of them do, and that's why you still get a pH less than 7. Uh, we'll spend more time on that later in the course when we look at equilibrium. Um, carboxylic acids have the capability of hydrogen bonding, and it's because they have the OH hydroxyl group uh, as part of their structure. So hydrogen bonding occurs anytime you have hydrogen bonded to an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom. Um, so hydrogen bonding is very prevalent in carboxylic acids. Uh, they can hydro hydrogen bond with each other, and this adds a lot more um, intermolecular bonding capability between the molecules. So this is reflected in their boiling points being higher than alcohols of the same carbon chain length. So alcohols can hydrogen bond also, but uh, there's stronger hydrogen bonding between carboxylic acids uh, because it has the carbon double bonded to oxygen and also a hydroxyl group. So they can form these little um, systems called dimers. Dimers are when you have two molecules that are the same and they're uh, kind of oriented in space together through, uh, in this case, through hydrogen bonding. So um, Carboxylic acids, because they can hydrogen bond and because they have some polarity, they will be able to dissolve in water. Now, not all of them will. Um, I should have written this in here, but uh, if as soon as you get about five carbons or larger in the chain, those substances are not soluble in water because that chain, being nonpolar, starts to overcome uh, whatever solubility you would get from the carboxyl group. So the carboxyl group is really the polar part of the molecule, and the carbon chain is the nonpolar part. As soon as that carbon chain is um, greater than four carbon atoms long, uh, you start to see that these things are very difficult to dissolve in water. But the ones that are smaller than four carbons, um, or even four carbon long butanoic acid, uh, they can dissolve well in water. Okay. Um, in terms of their boiling points, this is kind of the data on the boiling points. Of, and you see butane, butanoal, and butanoic acid. They all have four carbons in them. And you can see the differences in boiling point as you start adding more oxygens to it. So uh, the alcohol is located somewhere in the middle, okay, 117.2 degrees Celsius. It has a higher boiling point than butane. And butanoic acid has an even higher boiling point than butanoal. 
Once again, that's because of the hydrogen bonding capabilities. So where can these things be found? Well, actually, a lot of them are found in fruits. Uh, they're naturally occurring in fruits. Um, you can find them in uh, butter and dairy products, and uh, you can also find some in ants. There's a one carboxylic acid that you can be that you can find in ants, and I didn't know this, but apparently you can like kind of squeeze ants, and um, the drippings, I guess, have this nice tangy taste, which you can add to your salad dressing. Didn't know that. Um, there's a bit of trivia for today. But uh, yeah, a lot of these acids can be found in foods. Um, they, this is what lends some of the acidic qualities of foods. So um, in fruits like citrus fruits, um, apples, strawberries, uh, you can find them in rhubarb. Um, butter also has some carboxylic acids in it. Um, any sort of fats or oils are built using carboxylic acids and um, if they start to go bad, you can start smelling those carboxylic acids. Um, lots of fats are really just essentially um, fatty acids bonded to a glycerol molecule to make something called a uh, triglyceride. Um, but the fatty acids are all carboxylic acids. Um, so we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time on that a little bit later. Acids all have really strong sour odors, odors, Ooh, hard to say. Carboxylic acids all have strong sour odors. Um, this one is butanoic acid. It's got four carbons in its chain, so that's why we use a butane root. Um, this one really smells horrible. It smells like uh, vomit. Um, this is actually the same smell that is produced when uh, butter has been rancid. Uh, so that's, you know, if you leave butter out in the open and it's allowed to kind of degrade over time and spoil, um, it produces this really unpleasant odor, and this is the molecule responsible for it. So it's also called butyric acid, which you can kind of see looks similar to butter because um, it's found in butter, particularly butter that's gone bad. All right, how do we name these? Well, um, Naming them is pretty simple. You count the number of carbon atoms in the chain, then you assign a parent name based on that number, and then here's the big change. We need to substitute the suffix of ane for oic acid. And in this course, um, you're not going to see any carboxyl groups. Uh, you're not going to be responsible for naming compounds that have carboxyl groups on alkenes or alkynes. Um, but so you'll just see carboxyl groups on alkanes, and those are the ones that you'll, you'll need to name. So you're really just su substituting the suffix of ane for oic acid. So this one has one carbon in the chain, so it has the root of meth, and we change the suffix to oic acid, so this becomes methanoic acid. Uh, this is also known as formic acid. This is the one that's found in ants that adds that tangy taste. Um, so that's formic acid. Uh, and I believe ants can also kind of shoot formic acid at predators to kind of ward them off as a defense mechanism. All right, um, this is a little bit of a longer chain. Um, sometimes you might have to name them if they have a uh, an alkyl branch coming off of them. So. Um, the nice thing about carboxylic acids is that they have to occur at the at a terminal carbon in the chain, so they have to occur on the ends. Uh, by definition, that means they're going to have to be carbon one, as they so far are a functional group that gets priority over everything else. So wherever they occur is carbon one. So branches will then get numbered uh, relative to that uh, first carbon where the carboxyl group occurs. So this one has four carbons in the longest continuous chain. There's a methyl group found at three. So we would call this 3-methyl-butanoic acid. Uh, one that you'll need to memorize is, um, like all the other things with benzene, is uh, this one here. This one's called benzoic acid. And this is where we have a carboxyl group bonded directly to the benzene ring. So it's called benzoic acid. And uh, 
yeah, so that's it for this lesson, this short lesson on carboxylic acids. Um, we'll see them again in the future when we study esters because we can make esters, our fourth functional group, from carboxylic acids and alcohols. All right, see you in the next.